tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Indianapolis Colts and the Cleveland Browns. And he almost flirted with disaster there, but it does get into the end zone before going out, and they'll bring it out to the 25. Success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Ball on the 30. They'll Detroit, come up with a Detroit. second and five. All right, here we go. 3 19. Three. Looking to throw on second down. Lawrence. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Looking to throw, Lawrence, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion, and to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that, they might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. and 10. James. And his first pass is incomplete. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. To throw is James. To throw again. He's going to air one out. He's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one goes for 36 yards. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. James now on first and 10. Throwing right, and that's complete. 20. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A big play there with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Colts are going to take a first quarter lead. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career. And that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Grady Jarrett with the tackle. Double in this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Off play action. Lawrence. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's able to get up here to the 26. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. 
Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Back to throw. Lawrence. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. The partner just looking at some of the struggles they've had this season. The playoffs are not in their future. As they start to peer toward the offseason, what moves might they make? I think the running back position, and I know we talk all the time about the NFL being a passing league, but the teams that run the ball effectively, they're the ones that go deep into the playoffs and go to the Super Bowl. They have to upgrade here. And you and I both know in recent years in the draft, people have shied away from taking a runner early, but if there's that special one there, I say they go get him. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now James, throwing on first down. Looking left side, he's got it, complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give the Colts 13 yards at a first down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, Something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open. That makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. The tackle made by Derek Rivers. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they were hoping, those big defensive linemen would take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And they're just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe mm. a back, someone to help assist, because right now, the quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. Hey, 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 hey. James, throwing on third and long. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially... Give him 15. Now the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? A good pick up there, a 22. Well, they brought the pressure, and that meant man coverage behind him, so he's still able to complete the pass. Even as he took the hit, and that's what you have to do, because I was just talking with a coach the other day, and he said, look, it's not always going to be pretty back there. You're going to have to give me completions. Even when you're taking some hits, sometimes you have to be your own blitz control, for lack of a better term got to make completion step up and make those throws and he did that to the right side and he's got more complete and he's able to get it down to the 25 yard line give him a couple on the catch it's second and eight one thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch but in this situation the defense was effective able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going To throw on second down, Lawrence, and incomplete there, a nice hit, jars the ball free, and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field, makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida, an absolute mess. 
On third down, Lawrence. That's going to be caught. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I'd have to say that whenever you see a good post route run, they do not like to let it end without the catch. Hence, that great diving play. Yeah, lay it up there, let him go get it. He got it. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. He gets it halfway there with that run. I think you play up-tempo, get right back on the line of scrimmage, and hammer at him again. And that's going to be caught for the Browns. Touchdown. In for the score. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. And it's no good. He misses the extra point, and this remains a 7-6 game. So we're back to a one-point game now as the kickoff comes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll probably wish he'd reconsidered here. It will cost him 10 yards as he's down at the 15. A conventional football. Football 101 tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these teams, special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light there. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Here's James, off the play fake. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off near the 29. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. So a dangerous pass over the middle in his own coverage. And it bit him hard. And what's really difficult when you throw it in that direction and versus that zone... That means the linebackers have gotten to their spot, gotten their heads back around, and they can see the quarterback and everything in front of them. And they took big advantage of it, went in the other direction. Excellent blocking and picked up a touchdown. That's fielded in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Throwing after the interception. James. Throw left side complete. That's Neal. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. On third down, it's Coleman. And for the moment, this will be a first down. But we have a marker on the field. Let's see if this stands. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Detroit! 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 To throw is James. To throw on third down. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 27. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Week after week, we're seeing plays like this from him. And I, I think he's in line. We've discussed it before for NFL Defensive Player of the Year. And a big reason why, I think, is because of his ball skills. And that's something that, for guys of his position, they've talked about it for years. They've done the drills. But they really... And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. D.J. Moore 
with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the Colts coming out now. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Colts in position. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Coleman. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. James now on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against the zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Now James, throwing on third and long. Shaheen, the tight end on the right side. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 16, but they'll remain short of the marker, and it's fourth down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is taken around the 12. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And the Browns will take over first and 10. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Leopard! Leopard! Hurry up, here we go! Blue lining! Blue lining! Okay, and they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Watch him now, Barney! Barney! Shit, shit. Shit. They go play action here on first down. And over the middle, this is Parker. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. They were in zone defensively, went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind Watch crossing routes party. against zone because eventually you're going to run into their territory, and that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or play on the ball. Offensively, nice execution to find a hole, make the catch. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Now let's go! Blue lining! Blue lining! Watch it now, Barney! Barney! First down, Lawrence. Over the middle and into the hands of his 
receiver more. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. A great effort there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Browns add on to their lead. And he knocks it through. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And an alley to run. And now off to the races, down the right side. All right, let's give credit where credit is due. How about that return? Great blocking, great vision, all the way down to the two-yard line. The only person who has to be upset, the guy who didn't get it into the end zone. That far and no reward. The extra point up and good. And that will shave one more off this lead. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Watch it now, Barney, Barney! Back and they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Second and six, just inside the 30. Here we go now. Blue Blue. Looking to throw on second down. Lawrence looking left side. That's caught by Moore. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? <laughs> you think? A guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something, and they were supposed to be doing something else. The bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So first and 10 now from the 30. All right, now, lucky 56, lucky 56. Ah! Throwing on first down, Lawrence. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. It's a gain of six on the play, and it'll be a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. From the gun, Lawrence. And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. Vontez Burfitt in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. To throw on second down. Lawrence flushed out right. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he'll be brought down here at the 3-yard line. A minute 57 to go in this first half. More from Cleveland after this. The Browns on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and goal. Top 
separating from the gun. Lawrence. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. He opted to go with his scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. And Gonzalez puts this one through. And that will swell the lead to 16. They took it all the way to the one, but in the end, opt for three. It just doesn't sound right, does it? If you got all the way down to the one-yard line, isn't that supposed to be a play in the end zone that culminates in a touchdown for your team? <laughs> and per usual, it felt like the guys on the sideline wanted to go ahead and go for it. Of course they did, but of course head coach, it defers back to him, and he made the decision, right, now, let's get three out of this, make sure we get some points. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. He'll pick up another first down with that run. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. James. On first and ten, incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Here's James, throwing again on second and ten. And he comes back with one complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As he'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. On first and ten, James. Out left to Shaheen. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Now the Colts moving quickly here in the hurry-up offense. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. The Colts on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and six. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off at the 18. There he goes, left side. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns defense has a touchdown. Part of what we just saw, that's a great example of a team that was really amped up. They've been playing so well, yet they didn't get overexcited and have a bust on defense and gave up a big play. Instead, they created their own big play with a pick six. This one may be over. Yeah, it's just the first half, but that lead has swelled to the point where you're wondering if it is over already. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. He's able to rattle off six on the carry, and that'll get him to third and four. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. To throw is James from the gun on third down. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off at the 49. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10. No, 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 no. Check. Patriot. Patriot. Gun, gun. Gun, gun. Over, 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 over. Over, 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 over. 
Throwing to start the drive. Lawrence. Going deep here for Parker. This is caught. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Devontae Parker in the final seconds of the first half. And the Browns are pouring it on. And his kick is good. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to. All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. So we have reached halftime here in Cleveland with the Browns on top. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is. Right? I don't want... And now here is another interception. Picked off at the 14. Yet another interception, and I just had to double-check my math. But it is now eight between last week and this week. Well, I just used the calculator. I didn't worry about <laughs> double-checking it. But the thing that always throws me when you see quarterbacks in this type of a bad spot, they're trying to figure out what they can do to change it. And sometimes they try too hard, and they never get out of it. And that's where he is right now. He's just locked in in a really bad way. Off the corner, where'd he come from? Well, I, guess, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but really nice play. I like when you're able to pose a question and answer it at the same time. That's exactly where he came from, but it's not something that you normally see. Most of the time, we're thinking about those guys covering pass catchers. In this case, he was a big factor in the run game. No game. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. No, no, no. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he takes this one in for a Brown score. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. Gonzalez good on the extra point, And that will extend this big lead. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is... Just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, they got his man complete. The 20, 10, touchdown, Indianapolis. Devontae Adams, 82 yards. And it's for pride now, but the Colts get a bit closer. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, 
That meant fly route, go. Uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And last time out, another touchdown. And I think there may be some right, empty like seats around here like by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this was just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? You and me trying to get to the airport. That's the road true. to be fairly That's, clear that is by the time positive. we have to leave the booth. He's got a convoy, and he might be gone. A big play that time for Cleveland. 49 yards. Well, hello. I mean, it took him a while to get him a rep, but that's quite an introduction to this game. And not just hello. How about goodbye to the defense as he went past him? Big time run on his first carry of the game. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. We got three, we got three, fellas, we got three. Ah! And they'll run it here. And an alley to run. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. A great effort there. His third touchdown of the game and fourth on the year. And the Browns continue to roll. Gonzalez now to add the extra point. Gonzalez able to tack on the PAT, and the lead will swell by one more. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And the Colts getting ready to go. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives no, 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 exactly no, what you Patrick, want on offense. Patrick. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It yeah. was real easy last time. They can't Detroit, expect that going Detroit. forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. Now a play fake here on first down. Trying to lay one up deep. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw right, for it there. Look nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Going underneath, it's Coleman. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. Give him eight on the play, and they're going to face a third down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively, and it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. They're going to try and throw. That didn't appear to be a run, but he just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. 21 yards there, a big play on fourth down. Fourth and two, they got it. That was kind of that gray area. Is that a feel thing, whether you go run or pass there Detroit, offensively? Detroit. I think it's a feel thing. It's a tendency thing about what you like to do yourself on offense, as well as knowing how strong they are against the run on defense. Got to make a decision, and they made the correct one. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now, Barney, Barney. Here we go now. James now looking to throw on second down. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, 
Sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Call it a three-yard gain, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center-eligible stuff, but still, a lot of guys to account for. And my goodness, this is incomplete. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And this Browns defense stands tall. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Right back to him on first down. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Just a yard of the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. The Browns on third down, two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. Leopard! Leopard! They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And last time they were very fortunate, this offense, they went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory, but the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? <laughs> That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold But he up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Right, Go for it. Look Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Well, we'll see what his offense can do. Able to find Shaheen here. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Blair Brown not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Now James operating from the gun. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. He got 29 yards that time. Well, we haven't been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl, a Thanksgiving day. You know, when we get together this year, when the Davises and the Gardens get together, that's what our playbook's going to look like, like they're drawing them up in the dirt. And so far, it's working for both of them. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. 
And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a lot. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the depth. And my goodness, another interception. Picked up by the Michigan man, Jabril Peppers. Gosh, you add up last week and this week now. That's nine interceptions in this two-game stretch, and we're not done here. It's almost as like if they can't even believe their eyes. Or maybe, partner, is the confidence level in him so high that they believe he'll get out of it and make plays for them to win a game? Well, they've said they believe in him. That's being tested right here. The tackle there by LaMarcus Joyner. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo Detroit! Detroit! when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is, don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one, despite the heavy workload. But you Detroit, and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. And on the ground they go with a running back. And a short pickup there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now they try the right side here. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And it'll be a third and about 13. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. A good pick up there, seven yards, but it brings up fourth down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Colts are set up well as they take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. That right now, that's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. Now they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Looking to throw. James looking deep for Adams. And now here is another interception. Picked off around the 27. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. The number seven, usually lucky oh, no, here lucky for lucky him. Lucky seven picks he's thrown in this game. No, 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 That's no, no, only Jack happened Patrick, Patrick. six times since 1960. And I know that the most recent time it happened, the guy would throw him. Get one of high. And oh, he coughed it up. But I think a Brown was able to recover, and they'll indeed hold on to the ball here. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there, and now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. The Browns on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and ten. Set, 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long, he's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for Cleveland, they get back to 500 now as the win moves them to 7-7. Seven and seven. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the New Orleans Saints. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they've plummeted now to 3-11. and 11, And they'll be at home next week for a date with the Houston Texans. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the... Drop kill, why drop kill? Why you gotta lie to me so much, babe?